In this video, we're going to look at behavioral economics, which is really where economics meets psychology and some of the psychological tendencies that people have as they interact in markets. It's just an overview. First, we're going to talk about rationality in the economic sense versus predictable irrationality, which is what behavioral economics offers as an alternative to the standard rational choice um, setup. Then we turn toward three different types of irrationalities that behavioral economists observe in the lab work that they do. That would be irrational preferences, beliefs, and choice. First, just to really get into what do we mean by rationality. Now normally if you and I are just speaking and I declare somebody to be irrational, normally what I'm actually saying is they're just crazy, they're totally unpredictable, they make bizarre decisions that are very difficult to understand. Now when we get into economics, there's a mainstream definition of rationality that is actually very, very narrow. In fact, it's so narrow that very few of us, in fact virtually no one, uh, meets this definition. Now, mainstream economists aren't particularly worried about this as long as this type of um, view is relatively simple for us to work out in models and as long as the models themselves predict reasonably well. So it's not necessarily that disturbing if people aren't strictly rational as long as we're close enough that we can make reasonable predictions. But let's get into what that definition is. It requires first that our beliefs are free from any kind of systematic errors. That is, we don't make the same kind of mistakes in our beliefs over and over and over again. Then there are a number of strictures placed on preferences. First, preferences are stable. That is, we don't just flip and change our minds about things on any kind of regular basis. Preferences are stable. If we change our preferences, it's because there's actually some deep underlying reason. Perhaps there's a change in our information. So our underlying preferences may be the same, but our information about how we can achieve those preferences has changed. Secondly, we'd say that preferences are transitive. What that really means is that very much like in math, in math we'd say A is greater than B, B is greater than C, that means that A must be greater than C. Well, applying this to preferences, we would say something like an apple is preferred to a banana, a banana is preferred to a carrot. That means, given the choice between an apple and a carrot, the person should choose the apple. And finally, we'd say that preferences are atomistic, that is, more or less selfish. Now here, we want to be careful in that when we use the term selfish it has this naturally negative connotation. That's not necessarily the case here. Um, all we really mean is that we're neither magnanimous nor spiteful. That is that people aren't going to go out of their way to uh, help other people. They don't particularly care about other people's well-being. But at the same time, people are not going to go out of their way to hurt other people either. Um, as far as economists are concerned, with the definition of rationality, people just don't care about others' well-being, either positively or negatively. Now, behavioral economics does research to prove that we aren't rational by that standard definition. But at the same time, we're not crazy. It's not like people are totally unpredictable. Instead, people fall into very clear, very predictable patterns of behavior that we can actually predict, and that to a certain degree make some kind of intuitive sense to most of us, where we can recognize this in our own behavior. So we'd say that people are not rational, but they are predictably irrational. That is, they fall outside this mainstream notion of rationality. People, for example, don't have stable preferences. They might have their preferences be affected by very odd things. Um, people might actually be charitable or perhaps spiteful. But we do so in a very predictable way that isn't particularly shocking. 